Okay, you guys, so we're going to talk about something quite important. I don't know if you saw my Instagram post. Uh, I've been thinking about this a lot lately because of what's going on in the world. I want you guys to think about this. It's really important. You've heard us kind of talk around this point, but maybe not as directly uh, with Dan Milner, for instance. What is the mission of your photography? You know, you got to have something that wakes you up in the morning or you wake up in the morning and you go, what am I here to do? Why am I pointing my camera at the world? What am I doing with this? And that comes from your mission. Your camera is a tool and it's a tool for creativity, but it's really a tool for communication. And it can be used as a tool to help people. Now help is defined in the Oxford Dictionary as the action of helping someone do something or assistance. And the second one's even better, improve a situation or a problem. Be of benefit to, uh, improve a situation or a problem. Now we have a few problems in the world today, don't we? And we can use our tools of creativity. And this isn't just photography. There's a lot of artists who use their creative talents to change the world. I mean, you can think of some notable ones, and we're going to certainly look at them in a minute. Um, Pablo Picasso is the one that comes to mind here. Uh, using our art to create change is what this show is all about create change. And we're doing this by introducing this hashtag. Nobody else has used it yet. Project Create Peace. Um, there's two, two posts in that that I'm aware of, and they're both related to our show. And I would like you guys to use this when you post your stuff on Instagram or anywhere you put it. Use this hashtag. Now, Peace is the other side of war. Um, we're not going to just focus on peace because sometimes you have to tell the story of what you're trying to help people overcome. I mean, that is the role of us as photographers. We go out and we tell stories with our cameras. And we're going to see some examples from you guys as we get into that part of the show. But I want you to think about this first example of Pablo Picasso, 1937. Now, he was from Spain. He had moved to France, to Paris. And he was horrified by what was happening in 1937. Um, there's some text on it. He uh, was outraged by the reports of the Germans bombing civilians during the Spanish Civil War. Does that sound familiar? Um, he painted this uh, called Guernica, Guernica, I'm probably mispronouncing that, in response to the destruction of the town by that name, civilians being bombed. Okay, He used his art to spread the message, and it's become a representation of every, every city that has been bombed since then. This is a really important painting, and he used his ability as an artist you know, he had transitioned from several different art genres by this time. He went through his very real is, realistic realism <laughs> to cubism to what we can only really call his own genre, which is Pablo Picasso. But this is a, a really moving painting of how he depicted this horror and it really did move people around the world, and it still does. 1937 to today, you know, in the big scheme of things, that's not very long ago. And it certainly is very applicable in today's world. So he used that, and it's been used by many other people. And you guys can do the same thing. Here's an example of a Ukrainian conductor. Jared found this. Um, Herman Makarkane, Makanko, I know I'm messing up your name and I'm very sorry. By the way, all these links that we're going over will be in a blog post so you guys can refer to them later. Jared, why don't you tell them you found this? What, what's the story here? Yeah, um, so this gentleman is a, he belongs to a UN organization, uh, Artists for Peace. 
Uh, they have a whole bunch of different artists that promote different things. And in this case, this is a Ukrainian uh, conductor. And he took, uh, it, this was March 9th, and Maiden Square, which is kind of the main plaza of Kiev, uh, the capital, um, they, he held a concert there. Normally yeah. he has about like 60 to 80 people, I believe. He was able to round up about 20 people and uh, they held a concert during the day. Um, you know, in the previous night they'd been shelled and stuff. And so he held a concert, uh, sort of huh? a way to give relief to the people that were there and to stand in solidarity. You know, that's another example of what, how you can use your art. It's, it's not just about the storytelling, but it's also giving some relief. Can you imagine? Just think about that. These people the night before had been shelled, and here they are probably risking their lives. I mean, I don't know how where, where the fighting is going on in relationship to them, but here he is uh, holding a fairly lively concert. You, can, you, you guys will see that. We'll put it in the, in the uh, blog post. Pretty powerful stuff because we're now using, and he's using his art, to, to help these people. Remember that definition of help that I gave you. It's, it's giving some assistance to overcome a problem or a situation. And that is certainly a big situation there. Um, one, of the, one of the photographers I interviewed in 2009, a long time ago, Turu Kuamea. Uh, now, Turu, I'm showing some stuff, and we'll also give you guys the link to this. This is uh, part of another big article. But he said, a world history and a cautionary tale are written here in the fragments of past superpowers and in the faces of the descendants of history's great empires. He, he went and photographed through, um, um, he was in Mongolia, he was in, in uh, Afghanistan, and these are just pictures that he captured. Now, Something interesting about Taru is that he photographs with toy cameras because he doesn't want to take expensive equipment behind the lines. I mean, imagine if something happened to one of those, you know, his gear, either it could be stolen from him or broken or whatever. And all these are filmed with film cameras, Helgas and different toy cameras that he used. Really amazing photographs. Telling the story. And he obviously had a mission here. His mission was to show this area that had generation after generation had gone through war. And, you know, the, he's picturing it here so people can see it. I mean, that is one of our kind of our outlets as, as humans is if we can see what's going on, we know at least what, what's happening. Maybe we can do something about it. And if nothing more, just being informed certainly helps. So these are very powerful images. This is a, look at the length of that film. This is all film strip. So this is two and a quarter square. This is probably two and a quarter by, I don't know, it's an unusual frame, six or something. Unusual, very unusual frame. And this is one of my favorites right here. This was you know, filmed in probably 2007 or eight, but this could be from a hundred years ago. So here's an example, which you guys can look up to Rue. We'll give you some links. And I do have that interview that I did with him. That's quite interesting because I don't know anybody else who's professionally going out and shooting with toy cameras. Now, I want you to think about ways that you can carry out this mission. Because I'm imagining one of the first thoughts you might have, and if you're watching this video, you might have, well, I don't live in a war-torn area. You know, I live in Sacramento, California. How do I go shoot anything that, that has relevance to this? Well, think about it. Just start by doing a little bit of research, first of all. How could you tell your stories? And you'll see some examples from our own AYP club members in a minute. But how could you tell your stories about war or peace? Could you talk to friends or family in those areas? Maybe you have some, some family in the Ukraine you know, uh, war right now that you could get some photographs from them. 
Uh, maybe you can look into your family's past. Amy, who is uh, Amy Douglas, who's been part of our community, looked into uh, old negatives and found old negatives from from her family and started making prints of them. You could do the same thing. So maybe you have some old prints or negatives from war days and you could create a story around them. And then really it comes down to researching and getting ideas and asking people. You know, the part of storytelling is you got to listen, you got to observe before you start telling anybody else anything. And this is true as photographers. We have to watch and listen and gather information. Please subscribe and enable the bell so you don't miss any of our new shows. Like the video and please share it and leave your comments. I love hearing from you. And remember to get out and capture your own images of life.